Oh God. Yep. Because some of this stuff is literally moving bone. Try to keep this arm relaxed. Pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. I tore my uh, my tricep. Okay. And I never got it fixed. Benching? Uh, uh, doing tricep extensions. Okay. You know? And I tore this tricep. At the then, tendon? Yeah. It At the bottom part? The bone. Okay. But what happened was about, um, I was messed up on drugs and alcohol at the time sure not that at the time that i did it but at right. the time i was going through some shit mm -hmm. and i went to rehab like right after i tore my tricep so okay. and it never got a chance to heal then when i was in rehab i was like lifting and because my tricep i think was weakened i was doing some real light benching on a smith machine and i just tore this okay and then this was this was torn and this was torn Back. and i never really uh the rotator cuff was okay. 70 the doctor the mri said it was 70 percent torn the tricep was like 75% torn. Did you feel this one pop? I uh, never felt it do anything. Did it bruise up? Nope. No? Okay. It just, just sort of just one day when I went to lift, I'm like, oh shit, my you shoulder couldn't. kills. Yeah, it, okay. it doesn't move. And so my range of motion was about to here. Uh -huh. and I can get it a little bit higher. You you know, know, work your way into it. Painful. What if you extend your elbow all the way? Uh, well, this elbow can you? doesn't really okay. extend all the way because I think the tricep. Could it before you hurt the tricep? Yeah. Okay. And how about abduction? Can you go like that? Mm. A little bit. Do that stuff for me? So that one can get there all the way. So hands go here first, push them apart. Does it feel the same? Yeah. Push with just this one? Okay, okay push with just this one. Yeah, not bad. No pain on that one? Not really. Hold right there, thumb up. I'm gonna hold, don't let me go down with it. Let's click it on you, do it. Yeah, okay, thumb down. So does it hurt when I put you there? Um, a little bit yeah. weird, yeah. yeah. So you get soreness in there? Yeah. Yeah, in there, mm -hmm. for sure. Definitely feel that. So your humerus isn't where it needs to be either. So you can feel a nice bulge right here. <laughs> <Ain't it? laughs> this one, you see how it's, you're actually feeling the acromion? What's the acromion? This is the scapula. This is the this is the shoulder blade. Okay. So you're feeling this prominence right here. And so what's happening is you're not able to clear space underneath there. The bone has to have space to rotate. If it's jammed up in here like this, you're already internally rotated. It's gonna go. Yeah, that's it's gonna grind against it. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> and it's going to shred your rotator cuff worse the more you you use it. Yeah. Now you don't actually have to have tons of rotator cuff stability. Your deltoid's your prime mover. If your deltoid's big enough and strong enough, you can actually get away with not having a whole lot of rotator cuff activity. So, you know, when you fatigue and your rotator has to engage and you don't have any of them, that's a problem. Hmm. But like I've got a torn, I've got three torn rotator cuff muscles in this shoulder. As long as I keep this deltoid pretty well activated, it's fine, it doesn't hurt me. If I get atrophy here, then it really hurts, it rolls on me, it gets weak, it clicks. So if that's strong, it can give you a, this, this protective shell over your rotator cuff. You can feel the difference right there, right? Yeah. That notch versus that notch. That's a nice position, that's not. So if we correct the humeral position, this is gonna get a lot better. Now the question is, why is it there? Well, it's either trauma or it's a, a combination of muscles dragging you into that position. If it's a trauma, we'll fix it right away. If it's a combination, it'll get better, but then you'll have to keep up on the muscle work to keep it that way. Because right there. I've had about six, seven people work on it, mm -hmm. and they've never really been able to make much change. Uh, give it any change. I, they've been people that are really experienced, like really good. I'm not talking shit sure, about them. Sure, I'm sure. just saying like they haven't been able to figure it out. Right. Do this for me too. I'm gonna have you go right here. Push your hand down towards me. Does that hurt or you just can't oh, get it to go? A little bit, yeah. Push from there. Nothing? Okay, push down towards me. You feel the difference on those? Yeah. This is a big one on fighters. You know, they're throwing punches all the time. So they get tight through here and then they can't extend on their punches because they're tight underneath the shoulder. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. Not as sore as when we started? Okay. Uh, it doesn't even hurt after you, after after a few. you move it a little bit. Yeah, so here's the secondary one. And as a power lifter, you guys all have serratus anteriors that are locked up. Why are you not laughing? It's ticklish. Oh, it hurts. So <laughs> serratus anterior is a protractor. If your protractor is super contracted, then you can't retract. So then you can't get your shoulder blades far enough back to engage your pecs. So you're in a bad you know, uh, mechanical position to get to that motion. So if we clear the protractor, then you can retract and then get your protractor to, to engage. Right there. All right, push down again. That feels stronger? Yeah. 
a lot stronger, yeah. So turn your head to the right just a little bit. Perfect. Or push your head towards me just a little bit. Push, 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 push. The hammering doesn't hurt. These guys are looking like it kills. It yeah, the hammering's, the, really the thumbs hurt. are way worse. Pull yeah. this arm there, grab it with your other arm, and then you're gonna pull it across your body just a little bit. Try to keep this arm relaxed. Pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. Pull a little more. Keep pulling. Good, okay. And then we'll go here again. Worse after that one? Uh, maybe. A little worse, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, like... it was better the other way. All right, so turn the palm out just a little bit and then reach back just a tad. And then keep going back. Keep going. Keep going. That one was better. Yeah. Yeah, better there too. Let it really hang. There it goes. Let it really hang. Good. Where are you feeling the limitation there? Is it more in the trap or more on the it's, shoulder? It's like right in there. Huh? Still in the front of the shoulder. Okay. Okay, try again. Yeah, I'm going a little hard on the top part. <laughs> so, just, just so you guys know. Spoke too soon on that, huh? So if you look now, you can see him using his deltoid. Before he's using his neck, his shoulder blade. It's still just right there. Turn your head to the right just a little. There, try that again. That front one feel a lot better? And we'll do a little muscle work too. Because I feel like we're getting bony movement now, and now we're actually seeing the limitation of your muscular tightness. So go up again. Yeah. So we're gonna go right here. I'm just gonna have you do a few shoulder presses up and down like that. I'm gonna scoop right there. And back down. So if the shoulder joint can't move for a long enough period of time, then the lat's relatively shortened and tightened. So there's layers. You gotta clear the bony space and the muscular space. And this is where I would generally, like on somebody big like you with deep muscle tone here, dry needle you, which is illegal in California. What is dry needling? What exactly do you do? You're sticking an acupuncture needle into the belly of the muscle to, to facilitate that same twitch response. It turns the muscle off from the inside out. So it decreases the, turn, the tone drastically because the muscle tissue is the same always. So when you're under anesthesia, that's still the same muscle as when you're awake, but you can flop people all over the place because there's no muscle tone. It's all neurological tone. Mm -hmm. So when you turn off the tone from the inside out, now you don't have that resistance. Then when you stretch, you actually change the, the tissue itself instead of running into the, you know, the boundaries of it. So what will happen too is like because you use your, your levator and your trap more, mm -hmm. it'll drive your ribs up into the brachial plexus here. So then it'll pinch the nerves that go to the shoulder. So you, you create a secondary issue that layers on the first issue. That's what I'm kind of seeing on you now. Okay, go up again. That one felt stronger? Yeah. Yeah, it's more, it's more of that one now. Oh. So the, the scalenes, the muscles that go on the side of the neck, they can pinch the nerves that go down to the shoulder and the arms. So if they're too tight, you clear them out, then they get the, the nerve uh, flowing to that area. Like yeah. just that, whatever you did. What we just cleared there? Yeah. Yeah. Because what I'm feeling now is like, I feel like the mus the bone's moving better, but you're still getting a lot of muscular limitation. Like a lot of areas of your body, you're, you don't really have wiring to tell you something's wrong. Because biologically, if something was hurting your neck, you'd probably be dead. <laughs> your brain, your heart, like a lot of your internal organs don't have true neurological um, capacity for pain. So it hijacks other pathways. It's like when you have appendix or gallbladder stuff, you feel it other places. Kidneys, neck issues, you'll feel in your head and your eyeballs. Heart attack, you feel in your left arm. Not bad. Relax this arm completely. This is actually how we reset like dislocated shoulders. He's pulling away from the joint. Mm -hmm. I would stick my foot in here to, to reset a dislocated shoulder so wow. I have a better lever, but this is a more functional variation of the same maneuver. 
each time I go, I can get a little further. So there's the resistance point. You feel it? Yeah. So now the bottom's clear. Where do you think that resistance is coming from? Is it from the top or from the bottom? That's in the joint, what I'm feeling right there. How do you feel about hanging for your shoulder? That's, that's it, what I've been doing. It can be good if it's already cleared. Ah, I got you. But you have to have clearance first for it to be effective. So hanging after this would be a good idea. Most likely. And shrug it. And reach. And shrug. So pull that arm across your body that way. And relax it. Let it go, let it go. Like Elsa. Push. And relax. Oof. Yeah, there's a spot. So this is a spot you can get to pretty easily on anything in here. Like, on yeah, just leaning in on one of the bars or something like that. So right in here, you feel that? Yeah. That's where you want to get to. Is it like a, like a clump or is it like a little strand? That's... A little bit of both. Yeah. So there's a lot of muscles that cross here. Coracobrachialis, anterior deltoid, both heads of the, or excuse me, the short end of the bicep. Um, pec minor, pec major. So each one is a little different. This is anterior deltoid. This is more bicep. That's more pec major. That's anterior deltoid. So I knew that anterior delta is the worst of the group. Yeah. All right, try that again. Nice. That's a lot better. Now the limitation is the long head of the tricep. So when he gets to there, you can see it's actually a little bit of lat. It's right there. So pull that elbow down towards me and then relax it just a little bit. It's there. Feel how fibrous that is? Yeah. And that's gonna take a little time to get out. So when you don't get stretched to tissue, your body lays down different types of collagen, yeah. and it's not very elastic, and so you have to really work to get it replaced. So that power coming in now? It's going pretty good now. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely here now. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's nasty. See how we keep clearing out layers when we find a new layer? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So at first, it was mostly bony. Like, his, his shoulder was, was blocked. Once we cleared that, we could see that it was more muscular. Then we cleared the top part, that helped. Then we cleared the front part, that helped. Then we cleared the lat, now it's all subscapular. Oh, yes, it is subscapular. Something like that. So now it's because, like, as you go to reach, it's all pinned down right here. Yeah. It's been stuck there forever. Exactly. To protect your arm like this. Because he hasn't been able to stretch because he was blocked mechanically before. Yeah. All right, we're going to put you here. Reach up. Reach up. Oh, God. I am sorry about this, really. That's good, though. You're doing good. Yeah, you are. You're making a lot of progress. Yeah. Yeah, that right there. Oh. So for self-release on this one, I put a tennis ball in a little PVC pipe. Self-release. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so you would take it with the other end, and you put the, the tennis ball here, and then rock it back and forth. It's softer, since this area you can't put like metal or. Is that in there? Mm-hmm. What is that popping? Back down. Well, it, bones? it could be over a rib, it could be the tendon, it could be part of that tear, it could be some arthritis. Not as bad on this side? No. No. How about that one? No? A little bit more. That's Not as bad as whatever you're just doing. Yeah. yeah. It's important go. for you to find the pain though, right? I mean, yeah. It's the only way to kind of get it out of there, you got to... For one, but for two, also for his realization of what he needs to work on. What are the good things to do um, for your shoulder? Like, so I have shoulder pain, right? Should, right. I, should I cease the bench press until it gets better? Until you can externally rotate your humerus, yeah. So I just don't, don't even bother doing it. Just, just... I would do more like cable presses or even like on a Smith machine um, without extending all the way. So, you know half reps to where you're getting, it, yeah. you're getting good, um, nothing that causes internal rotation. So bench press is internally rotated here, right? So what we don't want is any more of this facilitation right now. We'll get back to you eventually. So we can, we can bench <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, and actually. Back. And if you went uh, reverse grip, probably here is gonna feel the best for you. But the more we facilitate internal rotation, you're not gonna overcome the amount of t uh, tension you have there. So you need to roll that more than you activate it for now until you get back to a neutral position and you can bring it back. What exercises do you do then? Just like these little rotator cuff things? He, he can't do that yet. So low, like reverse rear delta activations, YSTs, A's, mostly A's. Right, so rehab type stuff. Yeah. And 
palm up or neutral reverse flies would probably be a good activation. You just have to make sure this doesn't grind when you do it. Yeah, it's still pretty stiff on the top end. Okay, go front to back again. Yeah. Better, worse, or same on that one? But now it feels a little tighter. A little worse, right? I saw that. Let's go the other way with it. <laughs> it happens sometimes, huh? Well, that's what we were just saying. We, back back in the... When we moved the humerus forward, it actually made him worse, so we had to go back the other way. Is that back where it was? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's back where it was. Okay, let's come back there here again. Because some of this stuff is literally moving bone. Like, so if it's, an, if it's too far forward, that'll give you problems. Pull the shoulder blades back. It's right there. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Good, now again. Not bad. And what I want to see is this one. Let's go here and then turn it down again. There, that's better. How's that feeling? I'm just holding it Good. there. Not too bad. All right, now resist me on the way up. Not bad. So if you look right here, I think part of what's going on here, <clears throat> his lateral head didn't take as much of the brunt mm -hmm. as the long head and the medial head. <clears throat> so because of where the lateral head ties, it's giving a limitation to that internal portion. Mm. So while it needs to engage, because this isn't necessarily attached by anything other than scar tissue anymore, this is limiting his, his movement. Right. Is there anything that can be done about that tricep? Or is it like just shot? Yeah, I mean, they, they could cut it and reattach it, but the recovery on that's gonna be really, really tough. Um, I think PRP through the tendon might be beneficial for you. Like, you know, the, the, the tendon itself, because right. that's where you get that tendinosis. But just trying to work it out, just trying to train it and stuff. It'll help. For sure, particularly eccentric motions. <clears throat> so just kind of controlling that. it down. A lot slower. But not necessarily extending it up. Right. Like you'd have to have a partner and you could take you it down slow it. and then somebody lift it and put it back for you. That's how we treat Achilles tendonitis and yeah. you know, even patellar tendonitis sometimes. It's the negative that elongates the tissue but also makes it stronger. And then just let's see that motion. How's that? It's a lot better than you don't want your feeling. And then do this one again for me, front to back. That one looks pretty good. You saw it there? Yep. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was like kind of gross. I felt his back. His pop whole back pop, yeah. My arms. What is the that? whole spine that decompresses your spine. Yeah. Holy shit, you're six foot three. <laughs> That'd be great. Holy so like God. when a chiropractor typically adjusts you, it adjusts what are called the facet joints. That gets the intervertebral joints where you've been smashed down all the time. Actually, look at that. That helped his shoulder. Yeah. You're the man. You feel that? Yeah, thank you so yeah, much. Yes, sir. Eyes felt so great. Yeah, and your eyes are lightened up too there, huh? You feel that? It just feels good to not be... Smashed down? Like, well, everything's pulling on everything, so my body's at war. Right. With itself. All right. The time. I'm like, this shoulder's pulling this way, this hip's pulling up this way. And you're inflamed. Yeah. You know? Everything's going on at once, and just yeah. to get... You felt that pop everywhere in your spine on that one? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you felt That's it too? I felt. I felt like three or four things. Like, <laughs> You're like, what was that? Yeah, it's lumbosacral like joint, mid thoracic, the base of his skull definitely went to. So, yeah, when you're compressing all the time, you never really get decompressed like that, and that's really the only way to do it.